My first job after college was teaching at a Minnesota fabric store in Chicago. The favorite classes back then centered on easy ways to sew. Fast forward a few decades and the most requested topics still include those sewing techniques. In developing this series, I've taken the most requested techniques and fine-tuned them, resulting in the absolute easiest way to sew. Taking the lead-off spot in this episode are collars. Learn to cast aside traditional techniques and learn hands down the absolute easiest way to sew. That's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, making a difference in sewing, quilting, crafting, and needle arts for over 30 years. Amazing designs and Class A needles. To sew a collar is really nothing new, but to change it by sewing it in three steps may be new to some of you. Traditionally, you sew the front edge, you pivot, you sew the lower edge, and then return on the other side by pivoting again at the other corner. What happens is that usually there's a little bit of bulk, well, quite a bit of bulk at these corners, so we can eliminate that. I've shown this before in Sewing with Nancy, so some of you may have used this, but for those of you who haven't, here are my basic steps. Later on in this series, I'm going to talk about fusible interfacing, but I've fused interfacing to both collar pieces, covering the wrong side of both collars completely. And the edge has been pinned together, the outer edge has been pinned, and you're simply going to do some sewing by sewing the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And sewing starting at the very edge, not pivoting, but starting at that very cut edge. And then you just sew the whole long length using the seam allowance that's allowed on the pattern, which in this instance is 5 eighths of an inch. So I'll just quickly sew the whole long edge of this complete collar. Now then when I get to the other edge, I'm going to sew off the fabric, not pivoting. Here normally you would pivot, I'm just sewing completely off, cut the threads. Then do some pressing. I like to press the seam flat to set the stitches and then we'll do some pressing to one side. So steam, set it flat and then press to one direction. And I don't press the edges down just along that seam. And I'll just do part of that for you. But if you can see, I'm not pressing down these edges just along that edge to get it nice and crisp. My scissors is over here, so I'm going to scoot back and then do some trimming. Grading the seam allowances. It's pressed, the seam is pressed to the under collar. So the seam that's underneath is going to be trimmed the smallest. About a fourth of an inch or so. So you just trim that. And this is called grading because soon I'll be trimming the upper seam allowance and you trim the whole length, not quite as narrow. So this is you know, trimming off a scant fourth or eighth of an inch. So here we have the under collar, the upper collar, and then the seam allowance. And now we're going to change the stitches. On my screen, you'll soon be able to see that I'm going to change to a multiple step zigzag. And I like to what's called understitch with that stitch and lengthen it because it needs to be longer. And about that width, you can see just a little bit how that will look. And then stitching on the under collar, I'm going to start sewing at the cut edge. Now, traditionally, if you are understitching a collar and you've sewn it in the, in the normal way, it's impossible to stitch right to the corner. This way you can because you haven't enclosed that edge. So you stitch the whole works. And you get the idea. I'll just show you what has happened here. And here you see the understitching, which started at the cut edge all the way around. Now I'm going to turn this, turn the collar, and turn it so that it's folded on the stitching line. I have a little nest of stitches here. Just ignore that. And match these edges. 
so there's no bulk here. The seam is gone. And as I pin this, I'm going to stitch, turn my stitch back to the straight stitch and then sew the edge. Now I'm starting to sew at the fold. Stitch, I'm going to back stitch a little bit to lock those stitches and then sew the seam. And when this gets removed from the presser foot, you'll see that here's my stitching. Now I just clip off the edges, do some more grading, trimming the seam allowances at uneven widths. One is wider, going to be wider than the other. And I think I'll just clip off a little bit more. And you would press this, but to save time, I'm just going to turn this to the right side and presto. You have a great collar. Look at how that point comes out just perfectly because I did not pivot at that edge. I did the understitching and the grating before sewing that front edge. You can use the same wrap corner technique to get sharp, crisp corners, not only on garments, but also on pillow corners or wherever you may have seams that intersect. I'd like to show you how to do the same process practically on this pillow. This wrap corner technique can be done almost in any place where you have two seams that intersect that make this corner. And on the little sample that I have for this pillow, we're not going to understitch, but let me show you what I've done. This is a, a heavier fabric. This is double faced, double quilted fabric. So here you can see I have two fabrics and I've stitched along the edge, the complete edge. I've, di I've done some trimming of that batting, but that's immaterial. Really what I want to show you is that to turn a corner on quilting, on home decorating, you fold it along that stitching line. And the stitching line, if you can possibly see, is in red. So I'll just wrap that to the underside. And then I'm going to straight stitch this, sewing the seam down, the seam allowance down where, the way I had it folded. And when I turn this right side out, you will see that, let me do a little clipping. When I turn this right side out, it will be a sharp corner, even though it's bulky fabric. Wrap corners on garments or home deck. Learn to use the Feed Dogs, that crazy named machine part, to make lighter work when setting in certain sleeves. You can streamline sewing knits and also woven fabrics when you learn this trick. I'm going to be showing you two types of sleeves, setting in sleeves during this program. And the first is the easiest, where a shirt sleeve, a tailor, or not a tailored sleeve, but a very casual sleeve, is set in without having to ease the extra fabric from the sleeve into the armhole. You can use your sewing machine, or if you have a serger, you can do that. And to tell the difference between a shirt sleeve and a set-in sleeve, it's not designated on the pattern. You have to kind of look at the design of the sleeve. A shirt sleeve has less of a cap pitch. It doesn't have this dip or slope. It's pretty gentle a cap. Granted, these aren't the same sizes, but you can see how this has a very distinctive slope, like a ski slope. This is a smaller hill rather than a slope. So when your sleeve has a hill rather than a slope, then set it in before sewing the underarm seam to make it easier. Now here's my sample fabric and I just have the shoulder seam stitched or surged in this case and now I'm going to meet right sides together but let's take a look at this sleeve I have some markings a little nip or clip at the center at the top and then nips as we discussed in our first program at one in the front and two in the back as the pattern guided me now this is a knit pattern obviously so um, I'm going to not I don't have to uh, finish the edges, I'm just going to meet right sides together and I'm going to do three pins, that's all, one at the cap. So the top or where the seam is, I have a pin, pin the layers and I'm pinning from the wrong side and then at each end at the, at the underarm seams. And when I just show you here, you'll see that here being 
the, how much the sleeve is bigger. You can see the sleeve peeking out, but when we do the, when I do the sewing, it's going to be eased in. So let me pin the other side, and then I'll show you why it's going to be eased in. We'll be using the feed dogs, that funny name part of a sewing machine. And let me get my fabrics here. There we go. And the, the feed dogs really do a lot of work. And if you use them to their fullest potential, you'll find that you'll put the longer layer toward this little mechanism underneath. And when I just run this, you'll see them, they kind of bite and advance the fabric. Well, if you put the longer layer there, then it works out so well. Now, when you have a lot of ease in the sleeve, it doesn't work enough. You have to encourage it in another way. But here, let me get going and start to surge or sew with that seam allowance. Start to sew. And now I'll simply just match the cut edges as I'm surging. And that extra fabric is eased into place. Now, I'm surging, so take out pins before you reach an area. That would be disastrous. Or probably better yet, you should maybe pin parallel, but I kind of just do this my way. And just sew these edges, and everything is going well. Now, I didn't surge that underarm seam at all, but I just will do that next. So here it's been set in and eased in just by the use of the feed dogs. Now sew the underarm seam and your sleeve is set into place. For tailored sleeves, setting the sleeve into the armhole takes two steps. First easing the sleeve and then stitching it into the armhole. Here's how to minimize the sewing effort to professionally set in a sleeve. Now when you look at this tailored shirt and you see the set in sleeve, it, it eases in nicely, it's with woven fabric, not as easy to put in as knit, but the steps, if you follow the steps, it's going to work for you. I really should have added that the third step is pressing. With appropriate pressing, you'll also put the finishing touch on this sleeve to make it absolutely easy. During the first episode of our series, we discussed gathering. And the same type of gathering setup can also be accomplished on the sleeve to do the easing, to, to ease in the fullness, the extra fullness of this cap. Notice how much deeper the slope is of this cap than that first sleeve that I showed you for the shirt sleeve. We stitched two rows of basting stitches about at a half of an inch and three-eighths of an inch from the edge, stitching from the right side. This is the right side of the sleeve. You can see the seam has been stitched. The reason, if you recall from that episode, it's easier to pull the bobbin thread. It gathers more readily than the pulling the top thread. I don't know why, but it just does. So just take advantage of that. So I'm going to anchor the, the threads, wrap it around the pin like this, and then just ease this around until it starts to look like a cap. And this takes some time just to do the fullness and then I will check it on this end. And the reason I'm anchoring the other end is so I don't pull out those threads. Okay, there we go. I think that looks about right. You can see how it shapes. So you kind of do a little preliminary shaping and then we're going to meet right sides together. Here's my half bodice. Now, I've added some notches, those little, or nips, those little nips, little quarter of an inch clips at the center, and then the notches of the sleeve, and we'll match those. So the first thing you do is do the preliminary matching. And unlike the last sleeve we set in, we're going to sew from the E side. And you may think that's counterintuitive to what I just told you, but because of all the ease that has to be smoothed in, you can kind of help it along with your fingers and see what's happening by sewing with the sleeve side up. Okay, we're almost there. See how this is kind of coming together? I'm matching the little nips and notches on the, in the underarm area. And then, here, this is kind of nice. It eases in there without any puckers. And then meet the edges. So it takes some time to pin, but that's all part of it. And now I'm going to match the notches at the back 
and then double check that that's eased and that the easing is you know continuously around so that there's not much more in one area than the other now when we were close the some of the greatest wears at the underarm so I like to double stitch the underarm and that's where I start I start at the notch from the underarm so as I put this underneath my sewing machine you'll soon see that I'm going to start in the area that does not have any easing in it let me get those threads out of the way and I'll just sew this whole, whole sleeve in so we're starting from the notch I'll take out the pin and let's cut away those gathering threads. So I'm sewing from the underarm, the first notch, and here's the underarm area. And then to smooth it out, and this again, this is a one-to-one -one ratio right in this underarm. And I'll cut away these extra threads because it's already been eased into place. So you should be fine in that area. And now I'm gonna to get to the easing part. Take out your pins as you go around. Okay, now here's the, here's the time, the absolute easiest way to do this is just to work with your fingers as pins. Notice I don't have a lot of pins. I kind of hold the, my fingers in place and position the fabric. In ready to wear, they rarely pin. They do the same stitching time after time, of course, so they get very adept at it, but they use their fingers as pins on the side. Now, if you're not sewing exactly straight, which kind of I'm not, because I'm talking as I'm doing this, but you can take out or restitch around it, but you want to just make sure at this point that the fullness of the sleeve is correct and that what you have is kind of nice. And we're coming up to where I started now. That's what I mentioned. I'm gonna double stitch in the underarm area, making it more secure. So stitching just an eighth of an inch or fourth of an inch away from that first stitching. And then I stop sewing. I wanted to sew the whole thing for you. Usually I just sew parts of things, but you know, this needs to show how it's done. And now we can check. And let's hope it's okay. I think we're pretty good. If you had a little pucker, you could always restitch that, but oh, I think it, it looks quite well. So now the pressing. The pressing is probably the most important next step because we've eased it, we've set it in, so this is the third step. Set the machine or set the stitches flat. So stitch from the wrong side, pressing out the extra fullness. Press and press. And just keep pressing. And we'll press all the way around. So after you've set the seam flat, then check from the right side. And Aha, uh -huh. it looks better now that it's been pressed. And you can do some pressing now over a mitt. And I usually press from the wrong side. I don't press from the right side and don't press this open. So let me get my left hand in the mitt and it's got a secure ironing board surface on there. So it's not going to hurt you and then just press around this. Again, not pressing down those seam allowance or the cut edges, just along the seam line. Press, there you go. And in the underarm area, you can do some trimming. If you'd like to trim out some of that extra seam allowances, those extra seam allowances you could. But let's look at this. There, I did this, just like that. And the seam has been pressed and it's shaped and draped well. So ease first. Gently ease it, then do the setting in the sleeve, double stitch that underarm area. And then press, press flat and press over a shape so that when you're finished, you have a set in sleeve that looks great and was easy to do as well.
I'm sure most of you have sewn a quilt, clothing, a pillow, or even a handbag, but have you considered sewing a kite? Please welcome my Nancy's Corner guest, Paul Freeber, who is a kite enthusiast as well as a kite stitcher. He's been known to hum along to, let's go fly a kite. <laughs> welcome to Sewing with Nancy, Paul. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. You have made and are making beautiful kites, and I think we're going to start this interview by sharing with our viewers some of your great designs. Okay, well, the first is a Della Porta kite. It's, uh, it's based on a theme called the Mound Builders, and uh, it's a fairly large kite, about four and a half by five and a half feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a flat kite flown with a long tail. So. And in our studio, we have a smaller version that you made or an adaptation of that kite. Right. We'll look, take a closer look at that later. later. And it's got a lot of, lot of color in it, and it's, it's great. It has that mound builder theme. Now, the second image that you have a kite that's flying is, is an interesting story. Yes, it's, a Genki, uh, it's on a Genki platform, a little variant of a Genki, and uh, it, uh, it has some Maori theme uh, graphics. We traveled in New Zealand, and uh, it was a, inspired by a lot of the interesting way that they've done their artwork and graphics. And, so that's what that came from. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen a lot of banners at, at lakefront festivals and obviously at kite festivals, and you make those too. Right, we make some banners, and uh, there's a lot of folks making banners. Uh, there are six, some are 16, some are 20 feet, and uh, they're made with the same materials. Some a banner mm -hmm. cloth is used for some, uh, some use ripstop. So uh, I like to use a patchwork, uh, using a seminal patchwork uh, technique, which is they're attractive. Kites, so. Now, you didn't always make quilt, uh, make kites, excuse me, but first you flew them. Tell a little, well, our viewers a little history of well, that. Well, flying as a child, of course, we, uh, we flew paper kites yeah, yes. uh, uh, along Lake Michigan and Cudahy was where, we, where I grew up. And uh, uh, we flew kites very high. And, uh, of course, we never got them back at the end of the day. <laughs> and that's different today. So we sure. have, uh, I didn't really fly as an adult till I was in my 50s, so... And you were inspired so, by the photography. Well, yes. A friend here in town, uh, Craig Wilson, is, a, is an extraordinary kite aerial photographer and mm -hmm. had an, an exhibit downtown. And uh, we uh, got to check with him and talk with him. And he said, well, the first thing you have to do if you want to dabble with kite photography is, is get a kite. So one thing led to another, and suddenly I was just making and flying kites. Speaking of making the kites, let's show our viewers again that quilt, or the, I'm sorry, I keep saying quilt, yeah. the kite that we have, and uh, this is about 40 by 40? Yeah, this is a little smaller Della Porta. It's 41 inches by 46 inches, um, and it's, uh, again, a flat kite that needs a, a long tail to fly, and it's the same Mound Builders theme. Now, when you make it, you first create a design. Right, you must typically create a full-sized pattern of the kite and I usually try to project with a project you sure. make a piece mm -hmm. of artwork first and then project that image up onto that uh, you layer the fabrics of ripstop nylon and then you do some tacking right I use a hot tacking technique uh, and uh, which is very common with a lot of uh, kite makers that do applique some use uh, spray adhesive to keep sure. the fabric together the Ripstop is very slippery, which is one of the difficulties mm -hmm. in half to keep it together uh, when you're sewing something very large and stuffing it in and out of the arm of the sewing machine. You have to have it together. So. And then you sew from the wrong or the back of it. Yeah, we sew from the reverse side, sure. and uh, and uh, we're trying to create a stained glass effect. So much of the front of the kite is covered with uh, with black fabric, and uh, and then we we cut away after that's sure. finished to reveal the design. Oh, it, it, it's, it's really lovely, just how you trim and it's sewn with a zigzag machine. Right. Or zigzag it's a, stitch. It's a zigzag stitch. Uh, it's about a one-eighth inch stitch, uh, 14 or 20 stitches long, and uh, seems to work the best. Well, very stunning colors. You, you don't have a lot of variety of fabric, I understand. Right. The color, it's, it's harder and harder to get the colors that you'd like to have. And a lot of kite makers have stashes from old oh, old times sure. where that, that's not even available anymore. So it's hard to... But answer. the brilliant colors work up in the sky. Yes, they do. And that's one of the other problems is we have to always... It has to look good on the ground, but it also has to look good <laughs> 200 feet in the air. And so, um, 
Yeah, and the colors do look good in the, in the sky. Well, mm -hmm. Paul, thank you for sharing your art with us. Beautiful job. Thank well, you for thank joining you us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. If you'd like more information on Paul's quilt, quilt kite making process, you can go to nancyzeman.com and click on the Nancy's Corner. We have a link to a blog on this. Also go to nancyzeman.com to rewatch this program and many other shows and join us by social media. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Nancy Zeman has written a fully illustrated book entitled The Absolute Easiest Way to Sew, which includes all the techniques featured in this three-part series. It's $19.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2816. Order item number BK2816, The Absolute Easiest Way to Sew. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyseaman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding provided by Pellon. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.